artificial intelligence may be the worst or the best thing that ever happened to humankind. What kind of argument that artificial intelligence is the best thing that happened to humankind? For sure, we have a long way to go and you have to be sure that the, its place in society should be respected. Artificial intelligence will not be treated as bad, neither as good. It's just a kind of like atomic bomb. You can use a nuclear fission to make a medical equipment. You can use it to make war. It depends how you use it. I do believe that artificial intelligence may be here to help us, to support us. Artificial intelligence may be the next revolution, like machine was in the uh, industrial revolution, very important. Artificial intelligence may be our next revolution. Nowadays, artificial intelligence is able to do a considerable amount of work. It has its own limitation, its own scientific limitation, but since it was first uh, created about uh, 15 years ago, uh, it evolved a lot. We now have deep learning, all kind of technique that can be quite useful. Previously, on, uh, on the previous lives, you were able to talk about uh, how Robocop can show us that artificial intelligence was evolved, how the difference between the first version of the move was important to understand how to be short in the chain. It was talked about Matrix, how Matrix is still not real and how Matrix is still a long way to go. But for sure, uh, this kind of uh, limitation, this kind of uh, difficulties that you have, is just a way to show that artificial intelligence has a long way to go, but not necessarily that artificial intelligence is limited. It's because the type of, uh, of intelligence that artificial intelligence is able to, to, to give us is not necessarily the human kind, it's not necessarily the way that we expect artificial intelligence to be. Artificial intelligence has its own way to work, and its own way is much more superior than human, such as it's very good to do very repetitive and very uh, calculation-like work. So uh, I do believe that, he, like Kasparov said in his book, after he was defeated by Deep Blue, uh, we need to work together with artificial intelligence. It's not a matter of competition, it's a matter of working together, it's a matter of sharing the work. So any kind of repetitive work may be replaced by artificial intelligence in the future. So artificial intelligence is here to help humankind. Uh, unless we decide to make the stupid move of competing with artificial intelligence, as I, as I, as I heard once, uh, do not stay in the way of artificial intelligence, do not stand in the way of artificial intelligence. Make sure that you work together, that you collaborate. Artificial intelligence has a huge, a huge amount of potential. It can help us unlock our full potential of our creativity. It can help us to build a future that we, where human can really use his, his uh, highest amount of creativity. Uh, it goes to music, it goes to engineering, it goes to computer science. So we already see this kind of work. For example, I can do a live right now anywhere using artificial intelligence to make sure that the noise, the background noise of my life will not uh, make people uh, have any kind of discomfort. Uh, we can like segment the image, you can create like a, a background or, or any kind of a image. Uh, you can separate tumor from the, from the, from the healthy tissue on, on biomedical application. So the applications are, are endless. So I do believe that artificial intelligence is here to stay. I do believe that artificial intelligence is here to help humankind. But I know that if you do not pay attention to how it goes, you do not make sure that it goes in the right way, you may have a big problem. And the, the, coming back to Steve Hawking, the second fear that artificial intelligence may be the worst that happens to humankind may happen. We already have some kind of concept that China is building a, a, a prison based on artificial intelligence. But you have, we also have all the very awesome examples, such as a lot of studies all over the world so show how biomedical problems can be solved using artificial intelligence. So I'm very optimistic. On this live, we're going to talk about uh, the exponential growth of artificial intelligence. Always keep in mind that this, uh, the, uh, this is part of a book that I'm writing, so your feedback is quite important. So enjoy the show. Hey guys, hey everyone. So, just give me a minute. I always. Just give me a minute. I'm, I'm just checking. Right. I'm always checking the. 
the sun. Let's see, I, always, I need to make sure that that thing is working fine. Yeah, I think that's working fine. So first of all, I'm very happy to be here. I'm very happy to, to be part of the, of the Tomorrow One Live. So I'm very glad that we to talk about artificial intelligence, something that I have been working on for quite a while. So uh, I'm very happy to share with you my thoughts and the, the way I see artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is something very interesting for me. I have been working with artificial intelligence for maybe more than 15 years. I, the first time I worked with artificial intelligence was, was on my bachelor of engineering. At the time, I was I was introduced to a very simple uh, artificial intelligence based uh, system, which is called separation of boundary. It's very simple; it just have separate between one boundary and the other boundary. So the model was a perceptron, very simple perceptron. Perceptron was one of the first models created artificial intelligence. At the time, this model was trying to create separate of boundaries. Today, you have uh, several applications in biomedical engineering in which uh, we try to decide whether a patient is sick or not. Uh, not other application could be to decide whether uh, a website is fishing or not. This kind of application, they are based on classification. They, they have a, a final goal to separate between what is good, what's not good, in the sense of uh, uh, information. So today we are going to talk about uh, artificial intelligence and this financial goal. So let's start the, the, the show. Uh, let me. I, I, I'm testing the new. Uh, I'm testing this new. This new type of of, of of screen. I think it's nice. So you can all let me know whether it's like okay for you. So, uh, so today I'm going to talk about the the, the exponential. Né? The we're talking about exponential growth of artificial intelligence. Why I'm with the word exponential growth? Because it was quite fast. If you compare how artificial intelligence evolved with other kind of technology, it was very fast. It was so fast that uh, when I decided to give a break for my PhD, in which I was working with white box models, as, uh, more precisely, I was working with biomathematics, more precisely, I was working with Brelin Dynamic. So when I decided to leave that for a while, I said to give a break on artificial intelligence. I, when I came back, I think it was changed completely. I gave a break if maybe for three or four years as I was doing my PhD. I, it was one was not 100% of a break. I still kept working with artificial intelligence. But the point is that was a, a very fast movement because deep learning, which is nowadays a revolution, was in about 2000, uh, 2000, uh, 2012 uh, when the deep learning started to evolve. Uh, but if you compare how fast it was, it was quite fast, if you make a, a kind of comparison. Uh, the case of Google Translator, Google Image, uh, if you are uh, in uh, an outsider of the artificial intelligence community, you may see as a kind of a magic, like uh, the cell phone or data can recognize your face very fast. You no, you no, you no longer need to type a password, just show your face, just show your face to your to your phone is going to recognize you. It's quite impressive if you, if you come to think about it, because uh, if you do not uh, have an experience with artificial intelligence, you may think like it's like very easy, but it was not the 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 the, the problem of the face recognition it was a very very difficult problem. It was a problem that took a huge amount of energy from from the scientific community, but as deep learning was evolved, it not just deep learning, it was as well, I'm going to leave for you on the description of the video, some article I wrote. One of them is why deep learning took so much time to, to evolve. Uh, one of the reasons was software. Uh, today you have a much more powerful kind of software, such as GPU, is graphical processing units, which uh, ironically, a uh, very fun way to say, it was developed initially for, uh, it was developed initially for, was developed for uh, gaming, 
then uh, today we have a very powerful way of uh, making numerical calculation. So uh, a very nice citation that I like from a from the documentary, which I, I totally recommend the documentary, in the age of AI, it's a document that talks about how AI is, is like part of our, of our reality today. So in the age of AI, as says Emma Webb, she has a book, a very interesting book I totally recommend. Uh, the real practical and wonderful promise is that machine help us to be creative. It's not about competition. Some people talk about competition, some people talk about AI taking their jobs, but most of the jobs of AI, that AI is taking, they are repetitive work, such as uh, drive. They are work that does not take the best of humankind. I, I, I always like to play around, I like to joke around that every human is a scientist. The problem is that some people decide not to use it, their scientific side. I think people are afraid of AI, they're afraid of the unknown. But AI is not here to take your job unless you decide to stay, uh, to stay like he stuck in a producing position. Now, of course, uh, 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 the marked job will change, uh, and if, in the, of course, the government, the country, we have to make some things such as make sure that it, 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 we cannot keep the same old model of work with artificial intelligence. I mean, it's, there are some people like to call the industry uh, 4.0 uh, for because it's a, it's a new way of it. The same way that in the past. The uh, the machine the, was the revolution, the industrial revolution. AI may create a new kind of revolution, and this kind of revolution must be kept. Uh, the attention must be always uh, on, on, the, on, on this on this uh, on this system. So it's not a matter of uh, competition, as Kasparov said when he lost. It's a matter of work together with machines. So as he actually said, it's about creativity because I mean uh, we no longer need to keep thinking about the very heavy populations making because the human brain is limited. Yeah? We, we do not have a limited, uh, a limited uh, mental capacity. So when you take away, for example, I, I, I mean my PhD was about the mathematical models for medicine. So as I as I always try to make the point, I always try to defend. I try to defend on my talks. It's not that AI take the job of the doctor. The eye is going to take the boring work of the doctor. So that kind of work that the doctor do, that is very boring, repetitive, they not have to do anymore. So the time that they waste doing a repetitive and meaningless work, they can save the patient. So AI is not here to take away the job of the medical doctor. It's not here to take away the job of no one. Just take away the boring, the repetitive, then they work that uh, can be described in a very simple algorithm. So anything that can be described in an algorithm, will be uh, replaced. I don't think that's a bad news, it's a good news. So uh, in news creativity, uh, can you get terrific solution, such as the case of, uh, of uh, Go in this documentary. They have the story of Go, how Go, Go was when China decided to go deep on the game. China was defeated on Go, which is a very national game. So they thought, wow, AI defeated me. So the point is that they sh uh, that specific case, they show that uh, the computer was able to make a move that no hope, no human could think. When I was studying uh, revol uh, revolution uh, evolutionary computation with my bachelor, I remember an example in which AI, because it was a very nice example, because in general, when you have a kind of satellite uh, bar, beam, they use always the classical uh, engineering uh, shape, which you learn in the school. They decide to to, to build one using a, using AI, so it was quite mad, but it was much better. The, the the design was not beautiful, but it was much better than the the the, the kind of stable and human like pattern. So AI is able to to create solutions that he, human will never think about it. So that's the reason why AI is not here to to destroy your life. Uh, AI is not here to make you feel bad. AI is here to support humankind. So that's why uh, we should always keep in mind uh, how important is the work of AI, uh, especially to, to make us more creative, to make us to think more about the uh, important stuff, such as our own lives. Of course, uh, you, uh, we have to change uh, the working, uh, the way that the work works. Uh, but I think it's a good news. Maybe one of the, the 
the turning point of uh, humankind was when Gasparov was defeated by Deep Blue. Deep Blue was a computer. Uh, there is a book by Gasparov called Deep Thinking. I totally recommend the book. This Gasparov talked a little bit about his defeat. Uh, and the Deep Blue was not artificial intelligence. They have the Alpha, Alpha Go, if you remember well. But uh, Deep Blue was not yet artificial intelligence as you have today. It was brute force. That's why the Gasparov was pretty, <laughs> pretty angry. Because if you come to think about it, it was not a very fair fight. So, but now they can see that the, 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 the fight is fair. It seems that uh, now the AI can defeat uh, several grandmasters at once, which show how powerful AI. But why uh, we should not worry so much about this game? Because uh, chess is a pattern game. It's a combinatorial game. It's different from, for example, a considerable amount of stuff that we do as human. They are not... Uh, uh, what they call calculation like game. For, for you to have an idea, when I was on my bachelor, I did several subjects on my, on my, on my course. Uh, they are called combinatorial, combinatorial optimization, which, which is optimization based on combinatorial problem. Chess was one you know, of them. We had a kind of algorithm that you had to design to play chess. So chess is not a big deal. I mean, it was very important to wake up humankind that the AI was become very strong. But a but uh, but chess is not the 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 one that should be worried about. Uh, previously, we have a live called the Why Should Not Fear Terminator, uh, the Terminator of Schwarzenegger. Why should not fear that move? But should still keep attention. Also, uh, because one of the things I brought your attention is that AI should be. Uh, there's a book called the Weapon Weapon of Map Destruction. So you have two kinds of ways you should worry about AI. Should worry about AI as a data set and should be your AI about algorithm. So they have a big discussion about AI in the, in the social media, how AI is making moderation of social media. Uh, by the way, I do my best to leave for you, I, I leave for you a, a very simple algorithm that I have designed. I have it called the installed bot. It's a very simple algorithm that is able to understand when you try to insult it. It's a very simple algorithm which I have I have designed. So as you can as you see, it's not like a, a big deal, but it's a very simple algorithm to to uh, to, to design. So uh, so that's the point. So the, so what you should concern about this this match between Gasparov in the deep blue is that this match was not uh, the best of artificial intelligence not when it's not the point when artificial intelligence was doing his best it was just a brute force but nowadays we have uh, algorithm and have the computers that do its best on the game steve hawk which is not alive anymore he was do not know who was steve hawk steve hawk is some people say that he's the of shines of the of the, the last of shines and uh, Steve Hawk once said that AI could be either the best or the worst thing ever happened. So it can be either the, the worst or the best. Uh, I, I like to think that it was the best thing, but I do understand that if you do not pay attention to how AI is evolving, how AI is applied to human kind, it can be those. Because the problem of AI, if it's turned against uh, humankind, eh, on, the move, on, the, on, the, on the previous slide in which I talked about the uh, uh, should not fear uh, why should not uh, uh, why why should not fear the Terminator? Yeah, previously I showed you how you should not fear the Terminator. So the reason why we should not fear the Terminator is because the Terminator, as a matter of fact, is not uh, it's not what he uh, is what it may happen. Uh, when you say the worst thing. I think only that he's, he's talking about Terminator. When you talk about the worst thing, you don't think about like a machine killing human. But the worst thing that the machine can be used for mass destruction or mass destruction because uh, what uh, what machine can do is much faster than what a human can do. So if you were, for example, in the case of fake news, uh, fake news has been a threat in seven democracies all over the world. Brazil was one example. Recently, we have an election. It was a very tough time. It's still a very tough time in Brazil. Uh, and they used uh, fake news uh, in a, as, a way, as a way of trying to influence the election. It was the case of, as well in the United States. So that's artificial intelligence, sadly. Uh, because I think in that case, they, they are trying to decide who is going to see what. Sadly, 
it decides to optimize for emotion for re reaction. So some people say that you should uh, press this kind of uh, organizations, just Google, Facebook, to make uh, a better optimization of the algorithm, not to optimize to anger and hate. And sadly, uh, nowadays people are living basically online, which means that uh, this kind of algorithm, they have a very impact on, on everybody's life. So I think one thing I would say the worst thing that have ever had to humankind, he was talking about uh, this kind of manipulation, so on. I'm not sure what he meant with that, but that's how I see it. Uh, the best thing, in my opinion, is that you can apply to biomedical problems, you can apply to uh, make our life easier, such as intelligent car, uh, you can make use to fight criminals. Uh, but sadly, uh, AI is a kind of a scientific issue. Uh, it's, a, it's a scientific discovery. Uh, if you decide to use the nuclear weapon, the fission nuclear, the fission, uh, one, one of the Einstein in the his, all the people of his discovered the fission, the nuclear fission. Uh, if you decide to build the, build the, the nuclear bomb, it's a choice. But if you can use as well the same principle to make nuclear medicine, which is based on the same idea. One is save lives, the other one is going to destroy lives. So it's not a matter of the, the technology itself. Technology is neutral. AI is not like AI is not built to destroy humankind, but it can be used to destroy humankind depending on how it is it is used. So what is artificial intelligence? Uh, artificial intelligence, amazing or not, is a set of algorithms. We did not we did not know what's the algorithm. Algorithm is a set of computer commands. It's what you tell the computer to do. So if you tell the computer to go left and right, that's all good. If you tell the algorithm to to populate uh, the square root of nine, that's an algorithm. If you tell the algorithm to populate the, your, 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 your month uh, revenue, such as your income and outcome and see the, where you have money to spend the next month, that's an algorithm. Now, algorithm is a way that you do repetitive work. So it can happen as well uh, uh, in you. If you decide to write down how you do your job, every day repeat the same job, that's kind of algorithm. So artificial intelligence is a set of algorithms. The difference between uh, the classical algorithm and the artificial intelligence is how it is able to, to adapt, to learn. Artificial intelligence is a set of algorithms that's able to adapt, to learn, which means, for example, uh, uh, recently in the Brazilian election, whenever you type the, where the thief lives, uh, which in Portuguese means like the thief, uh, this the one that the 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 the, the, the one that is the the stone, uh, the one that's criminal. Uh, the the Google search uh, would send to Lula da Silva, which was a current president in Brazil. So I mean that machine was able to make association between a thief and the current president from Brazil. That's why it happened because it was an election, so people are doing make this association all the time. After the election, it no longer happened. Because the machine, where once the the election uh, finished, we no longer have this kind of massive amount of association. Because AI is about association, so if you have a data set which is not well balanced, a uh, huge amount of it. That's one of the one of the issue. Uh, the previously you talked about uh, why well, should not worry about the Terminator, but it still, it still should worry about the uh, uh, AI. Uh, the reason that if you have a, a data set which is massively uh, if not equilibrated, uh, with the equilibrium of the data is not well balanced, such as if you decide to train, it's not that long, you can find the literature. Uh, the, the, uh, there was a case in which they tried to create artificial intelligence for judging, for deciding whether someone should go to jail or not. They were put in jail, the, the artificial intelligence, mainly black people. Why? Because most of the, of the data sets are based on men and white men. It's not that well known, because if you have a data set which is biased, a data set to, to which is not well balanced, uh, the artificial intelligence will be unable to, to make the proper association. They're going to make the association, which is, uh, think like this, every uh, every association has a kind of connection, like human. The more you have an example of connect, the stronger it is, like like a habit uh, in your life. If you, if you have a habit in your life, you know, keep repeat, repeating the habit, doesn't matter if the habit is good, the habit is bad. It's going to be a habit. It's stronger and stronger. If I keep repeating to you that black people is is a uh, is criminal, uh, sooner or later you're going to believe that. That's how the prejudice is born. 
Uh, the planet is been born by a repetitive daily example of people black being bad. So uh, as once I heard, the best way for to, to end your prejudice is to you expose yourself to situations which black people is uh, winning or successful. So that's one thing that you should always keep in mind. Uh, let me just uh, keep check here. So, uh, so that's all, uh, one thing that you, uh, we should always uh, pay attention. We should always pay attention that uh, so artificial intelligence can be badly used. So artificial intelligence is a set of algorithms, simple like that. Uh, the difference that they have a kind of a learning principle. They are able to learn uh, like human, according to the situation. It's not just like you talk like human, because you have it today, uh, the narrow artificial intelligence, with the classical artificial intelligence, you have it, artificial general intelligence the artificial general intelligence they try to mimic humankind like human like uh, artificial intelligence nowadays they do not mimic human 100 percent they mimic just the ability to learn to learn from experience to learn from data set so what does what does make ai so unique uh there are several reasons why ai is unique one of the reasons that is very fast compared to human uh, there are the other reason that it has a huge ability to make it, uh, to find pattern like hidden pattern even though have a uh, human has a limited human is very good at, at find pattern but this ability is limited it's not very powerful as you like to think uh, as you like to to think uh, we are not as good as AI to make it, to find patterns so AI is very strong it's a very pattern finder uh, the other reason is that it's a very it's a very fast way to integrate information, such as you can in real time, you make all the kind of association which human cannot do. Uh, there are others, you can find another way as well, for example, you can say that AI is not biased, unless if you have a data that is not biased. So it's much easier to finish the supposed have a prejudice, like if you go, if you go to Google image, there's a prejudice on Google image. Uh, they, they associate the uh, image with black people, like bad hair, they associate with uh, black people, which is a prejudice. But this prejudice can be easily eliminated if you have a uh, balanced data set. So AI can be AI is not noise, such as noise. But I mean, a, a human is, is is widely affected by the condition of the moment, such as emotion, political condition, ideology. Uh, AI is not affected by that. If it, if it is affected, it will be easily eliminated. Human is very difficult for to eliminate in a kind of bias, in a, in, a, in a kind of direction, so on. So why human should not fear AI? Uh, we have a live previously called Why Should Not Fear AI, based on the Terminator, the, the, the movie of Arthur Snagger. And the, uh, the big point that uh, so the big point is that he, why humans should not fear? Because AI is AI is neutral. AI is not like he, AI is not doesn't have a conscience. Like he, AI like he want to kill him. It's a, just a move. It's like a, if you see that kind of move in which they snake like anaconda trying to kill someone. It's a it's a, just a move. Uh, it just snake is afraid of you. Is so afraid of them. The snake they bite you because they are afraid. It's a self-defense mechanism. So generally, the snake is going to go. It's going to go away for you. So in very rare occasion, a snake is going to go to kill you, like in the scene of the movie. It's any kind of AI. AI is not AI is neutral. Neutral AI is a scientific progress. So uh, it's not a problem of AI. It's a problem of the application of AI. So if you try to apply AI to destroy to do a mass destruction, it's not a matter of AI. It's a matter of how human decide to use it. So AI is not like he is not created to kill human. It's like the case of anaconda. And in general, in nature, a snake is not going to kill you. Like he by just decide to kill you, like unless there is a specific specific situation. Uh, so you should not fear, uh, and you have a huge he have a whole life on that. So I strongly suggest that you see the previous the previous life. So. Uh, what was the test of AI? AI was initially developed as a kind of algorithm to mimic the brain. Uh, it was a perceptron. It's a very, it was a, a very simple algorithm. Uh, initially, they, it was just one perceptron. Then they decided to put in layers, but they have problems to train this model. So for about 20, 30 years, it was in science. 
Until recently, they developed new ways to train this kind of uh, layers of uh, neurons called deep learning, uh, which was a kind of mush layer perceptron. So AI, so the past was based on a, on a wish, on a kind of, uh, which are very old. Uh, some people was able to find the artificial intelligence even in the Greek times. So it's not new the dream of human to learn to make machine learn. Uh, but just in the center of the computer, we we are able to do that because machine learning is meaningless. If you uh, unless you have a computer to to let, remember that the AI is just algorithm, as I said previously. So you need something to make it very fast. So AI cannot be possible unless you have a computer. Computer was the the recipe for the recipe for AI, and not just computer. It was a high-performance computer, which is called a high-performance computer, GPUs. They are very cheap, relatively cheap, and very fast computer. So AI cannot exist without the technology. So AI is tied to technology. Maybe in the future, even if you improve computer even more, AI will be improved, will improve even more. So AI is a set of good, but they need it. I even heard about the uh, uh, machine learning that's going to learn it, not just in just the algorithm. They are able to learn as well on the hardware. The hardware is going to adapt as well as a brain. The brain is a hardware that is able to move and to adapt according to the situation. So the press now is that you have two types of artificial intelligence. They have the narrow artificial intelligence, they have the uh, artificial general intelligence. The difference that he, one is the narrow artificial intelligence, which is about 90% of the models. Uh, they are most of the models, the successful models, such as deep learning, they are narrow intelligence. They are able to solve, they are to solve a specific problem. So they are unable to go out of the problem. They are much better than a classical algorithm, but they are still uh, created for a specific problem. So they are narrow. They are created to solve problem. By the way, I have a book about computational thinking, which I make a kind of, kind of discussion in a, in a, in a more, more uh, careful way. So, uh, so now they have uh, some group, there, which is recent, not very old, that try, try to create what they call the artificial general intelligence, but just a promise. Uh, the real situation, the real application, the real success nowadays is based on artificial intelligence, which is most of the artificial neural network most of them are supervised artificial neural network. So the future is not clear. By the way, I do have a live called the White Matrix Not Real, which was the previous live, in which I talk about the, what may happen if you make another big breakthrough on artificial intelligence. This breakthrough, which is, I, I mentioned previously in the previous live, has to do with communicative computer. So the future may be communication with computer, which I did a very nice live, Professor Kasabov. Uh, but for that, you still have a huge amount of uh, to, to overcome. So it's not very simple to make uh, this kind of future that we want. But uh, we also have the uh, artificial general intelligence, which will be a machine that is able not just to learn, but is able as well to adapt. I was seeing recently like kind of discussion in which they are they were at hand some kind of result, which machine that can gain a kind of uh, self-consciousness, which is not something that you should be like human. Uh, then they have a lot of question where the machine is able, there's a very nice move called the ex machina in which he, uh, they show how a machine was able to gain consciousness. It's a move, it's a fiction. I, I think you'll have a live about that in the future. If you see the, the, the sequence of lives, I think there is a live in, in which I put in the future for that. So the future of artificial intelligence is a little bit clear because artificial intelligence is very fast. So it's very hard to make predictions of the future. Because uh, I think it was maybe better than, than you think, or maybe the worst than you think that you have in the past case of failure, such as the perception was a failure initially, uh, but the plan was surprised. So we never know uh, what's going to be. I don't think that I know the future, but you have promises, yeah, general artificial intelligence. Uh, you have promises, I, pre I mentioned previously on the live about the matrix, that you may be able to communicate with the computer, but still just a promise. So the exponential growth of the artificial intelligence was a surprise to everyone. I think I, I, I work myself, I'm inside the community of artificial intelligence. I was very surprised how fast deep learning was. So as I said before, it was a sequence of factors such as uh, GPUs, graphical processing units, uh, the, how fast computers evolved and how cheap they became. 
because uh, it depends just because it depends as well uh, how how cheap you can implement those algorithms. Now they have a kind of movement. You should they want to create public APIs such as I like to use TensorFlow.js, which is Google. There's TensorFlow, which is Python, as well as Google. So all this kind of movement, in which they make the uh, artificial intelligence public, make it go very fast because people can use everywhere. So it was a very exponential growth. It was very fast, uh, even for someone that's inside the community of artificial intelligence. So please let me know your thoughts. Uh, you can let me know by email. You can let me know uh, by comments. I'm always open. Please make sure that you you are aware of the of the future of the next lives. Uh, in the future, we have other lives. So uh, let me know. So uh, let me see. So uh, please uh, can always let me know a thought. There is a, a sequence of life in the future. Uh, remember that it's part of an ebook that I'm writing. So your feedback, your comment can help me to write uh, the book. Uh, I do believe that artificial intelligence is a very rich uh, field. I, I have I have friends that never work with artificial intelligence. Uh, as I did my master of science with them, but some they decide to say that I'm an expert in artificial intelligence because artificial intelligence is all about mathematics. Uh, it's all about the computer science, so anyone can contribute to artificial intelligence. So that I think that's a very amazing field. It's a very amazing uh, opportunity for people to collaborate. Uh, I, I myself, I like to work with medicine, like biomedical problem, biomedical human segmentation, uh, mathematical model applied to medicine, but I know that it has been applied everywhere. Uh, speech recognition. Um, I have seen, sometimes I get him surprised how much application have nowadays. Uh, music like it, the, the the drum bot, in which I have a video on this channel, which I have a test, it works just fine. It works very well. So it makes me very happy to see how fast AI is evolving. So guys, I think uh, I, I went here. As always, you are welcome to let me know your thoughts uh, when you, you, you think that's the time. So. Uh, see you in the next live.